Welcome to be in the garden. Welcome to be in nature. As always, I trust your wells. I certainly have. Today in the garden, I'm just observing the noticeable change as we're transitioning from summer to autumn, where the birds do not disappoint. They're still talking, singing, and keeping me company as I take a wander around the bee in the garden garden. Thank you for joining me. You're always very welcome. Where the bees are collecting the last of the pollen, nectar, from these lavender. You can hear the rains are starting again. At the time of filming, we are in the middle of September and there's a definite change in the weather. I love nature nonetheless. It never ceases to amaze me. This is the betulous tree and um, I love that sort of grey speckledy spotting on its bark, in front of which is the Euronymus. And just about everywhere in the garden, we have spiders making their webs. Over here, I have evidence that squirrels, I'm assuming, have been digging out my crocuses that I planted last year. And uh, they seem to be making a meal out of these. Obviously for me, and the joy that I have in seeing the crocuses in the springtime here in the UK, it's such a shame because not just the effort of planting it, but just the beauty of seeing them, but clearly the squirrels have food in mind. And so around the lawn areas, a lot of the crocuses have been dug up and consumed. The agapanthus has been at his best already. And now the spent flowers are forming those seed pods which will dry out. I tend to leave them there though in situation and sometime in the new year or maybe very late winter, maybe December, January time when these currently, when these seed pods which are currently quite robust and wide and plump and green will dry out completely and will become something almost translucent in colour, light in colour and then I normally just scatter them around the garden and create even more. There are just a few remaining flowers now here on the jasmine but this has given us spectacular aromas for weeks. The weather comes, the weather goes. Sometimes it surprises me that with just a slight change in the weather, the trees can put on a few new blossoms. But I think for the most part, it's fair to say that the jasmine has done her best for this year. And alas, the autumn is allowing her to change colours slightly as she prepares for the autumn. Allow me to bring you back to my sink where I recently planted out 
a variety of different plants, for the most part sedum. They're continuing to show some small flowers. If you recall, I planted out the bed with clovers as well. And you can just see from here actually that the planting that I created is just a little bit more looser, isn't it? It's just a little more looser. And just as I speak, the sun is just belting through the clouds. So that's wonderful. And I have here my magic lamp. Do you remember that? And I love the combination of plants here. So today in the garden, thank you for joining me, by the way. Today in the garden, you know, it's actually quite warm. I think I was just beginning to speak as though the autumn was going to come and spring onto us. Certainly showing you around the garden and updating you with what's happening here in the bee in the garden. garden. But no sooner had I mentioned that, you know, autumn is round the corner, the sun bursts through the clouds. So I'm actually feeling warmer than normal. <laughs> So let's continue talking about what's happening in the garden today. I think today in the garden, I'm just going to have a look around, but there are one or two projects that I really know I need to get on top of. And um, shall I bring you along? Absolutely, it goes without saying. So one of them is a small task if you like it's not really a project it's a small task i need to do and that is to top up one of my large garden planting one of my large garden planters it's the big round white planter that i have and i just think over the years the soil is just sort of you know sinking down as it sort of compost even further down so what i've got to do is just top that up a little bit it's actually where i have um some posters and oh there's a beautiful bee that's just gone around my head um some i have some beautiful hostas and i also have some hellebore but the soil is just you know sinking down in that pot and so i'm just going to top that up a little bit and um, we've had a couple of days of rain here in the uk recently and um those of you who love gardening or are aware of it hostas absolutely are a great delicacy for slugs and snails so i'm warning you now <laughs> when i show you these hostas they have been annihilated by the snugs and slugs and snails i did try putting some eggshells in that container to try and deter the slugs and snails from there i don't use chemicals or any you know unnecessary Ooh, there's another bee or a fly or something I don't use any uh, pesticides or chemicals to deter um, unwanted pests in the garden, but I did put down some eggshells and I was hoping that that would deter them from eating up the hostas, but alas, it didn't work. <laughs> so there's virtually nothing left of my hostas, virtually nothing left of my hostas. But what I'm going to do is top it up with some fresh soil and I'm going to use something else to deter the slugs and snails from my hostas and to be honest i just have to hope that for next season which is a good many months away so we're only at the end of 2024 as i record this um we're in september 2024 and i literally have to be patient as we do have to be as gardeners and i have to wait to see whether next spring I'll have a better result with my hostas. But anyway, I've been sat down here talking for too long already. I need to go around the garden and do a little bit of tasks here and there. And I will, of course, bring you along. So thank you for joining me as always. Thank you so much for your comments, by the way. I'm loving them so much. Loving them so much. I am truly grateful. Thank you so, 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 so much. Okay, let's get some jobs done. So here it is. Here is that big circular planter that I have and I have planted in it some hosta. However, you can see the leaf damage on this hosta. There really has been no leaf untouched here. It has flowered and the flowers are spent. But the hosta leaves, which can be so beautiful, really beautiful, glorious, were completely, completely demolished by the slugs 
and the snails. I did throw in a lot of eggshells here. You can just about see there were lots of eggshells covering the whole of here, but that was not a deterrent at all. And um, I'm just continuing to look for alternative ways to deter the slugs and snails from this bed. I did use a plastic bottle, upcycled if you like, and put a drop of beer in the bottom. Maybe I won't show you, that's a little gross. And that did manage to capture a couple of slugs. Um, and I suppose all of us gardeners have to decide what's okay for us in the garden. I choose personally not to use chemicals, but I certainly want to enjoy my plants. And so the eggshells was meant to be just a deterrent to prevent them from coming into this bed. But clearly, as you can see, they devoured just about everything in here. I also actually have in this bed um, hellebore and they've also eaten the leaves of the hellebore which was quite surprising to me to be honest so what I'm going to do is I will use the beer traps I'm afraid I that's my option here the beer traps and you can just about see that the soil level in here has sort of collapsed over time and I'm just going to lift that up by putting in some fresh compost So I'm just pruning back the sarcococca where it's making contact with the container because clearly the slugs and snails are gaining too easy access. A lot, 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 lot better. Okay, there's now separation between the sofa popper and my container. I also have, as you can see, another pot behind actually, a terracotta pot, and um, I'm going to remove. comfrey that's growing in here. I have so much comfrey around the garden I'm okay with removing that because I'm going to pot this up with blueberries. I absolutely adore blueberries because blueberries need their own ericaceous soil or they need ericaceous or you know acidic soil I need to make sure that I provide them with that. I have in the past planted out my blueberries just in regular soil what I have in my garden but I've always found that they don't do so well. So I've got this pot here. It actually has some tulip bulbs in there as well, but for the most of the year, it's uh, a bit redundant. So I'm going to plant some of my blueberries in this pot as well. See how you just mind your own business in the garden before you know it, you've got another job that has just popped up. Okay. another job needs doing. I, I'm not even sure if I remember planting this um, comfrey in here, but I have so much comfrey in the garden, I'm not going to worry. I can always replant this with comfrey should I want to, but I'm going to put some ericaceous soil in here and plant the blueberry. I'm just going to carry on with this at the moment, the white tub here and I'm actually going to prune back some of the leaves here. As I said, just jumping from one task to the other, as I often do in the garden. But here, 
I'm going to prune back what's left of my hostas. There's really, this really was a poor display by any measure. Okay, so I've pruned the hostas back quite hard. There are very few leaves remaining on any of them. Um, I've also pruned back the hellebore. And you can see here that you've got the root area or the base of the hellebore in places such as this. I'll see if I can bring you a bit closer. Okay, so the base of the hellebore is definitely showing that there is sign of growth still. So I'm not too worried that um, the plant itself is damaged, not at all. I think where the slugs have, um, you know, made damage, it's mostly on the leaf part, but the base of the hellebore actually is showing um, sign of life. So I'm not too worried. They are, after all, um, you know, pretty much, they, they are perennials. They, they grow each year. So the base of the hellebore are okay it's the hostas that are really very damaged by the leaves um, what i'm going to do now is just scour the area for any slugs that might be hiding under leaves and i'm just making sure i remove any of those from here to bring the soil level up Okay, so I've just topped that up with some extra compost. What I'm going to do in the container behind, the terracotta one, is I'm going to remove some of that soil and top that one up with some ericaceous soil now to plant the blueberries. Right, I'm in a confined space here. However, what I'm trying to do is to take out some soil from the terracotta pot, which I am loading into a plastic container at this time. In the terracotta pot, there are also some daffodil bulbs, but I'm putting them in the wheelbarrow currently because I'm going to replant those. So all I'm going to try and do now is just empty out or par partially empty out the terracotta pot.
And here are the blueberries. Um, we are in September at the time of filming. I purchased these recently from the garden centre and they were reduced to half price. So um, this I think is a three litre container. And um, this is the variety that I picked up. They do say with blueberries, it's a good idea to have a, a you know, different varieties so that they can pollinate easily and they were down to six pounds where they were previously 12 pounds yes there is some slight plant damage here but i'll be pruning those out but as you can see there are still actually a few blueberries on this very very plant there's a second one here as well and again in the sale late September or middle of September and again laden with blueberries so this is a good sign to me that perhaps next year it'll do equally as well if not even better reduced to half price I've always said it's a great time to purchase things in garden centers because you can get <clears throat> you can get quite a good savings um, I'm in a bit of a tight corner so I'm just trying to figure out how to maneuver the camera so that you can see what it is I'm getting up to. Let's see what I can do here. Okay. This is the ericaceous soil. Again, I'm not sponsored by anybody when I'm doing my gardening channels, but this particular one happens to be miracle Grow Premium. you closer to see what that soil looks like and um, this is store-bought ericaceous soil they say great for rhododendrons as well bit of a tight space I'm gonna see if I can plant two of these in this large container and then once I've planted it, I'll give it a few days before I prune back. Just breaking down the soil. I think I have enough space for the two plants. In an ideal world, I'd probably only plant one in the centre, to be honest. But... But I don't have very many large containers anymore and I don't particularly want to purchase any more. So I'm going to see if I can make the most of planting two in this container and hope that they're not going to be too crowded. I'm not going to prune them straight away. I'm just going to plant them and let them settle in for a little moment and then I will prune them back Oops. there we have it in placing them in I have left a little space here they're about three or four inches between the edge of the plant that I purchased and the container itself the same on the other side I'm hoping that they will find this a nice comfortable place to grow. I'm just going to fill that up with some more ericaceous soil to top it up. And again, as I say, I'm not sponsored by any anybody when I make my videos, but just in case you're wondering, this is the this happens to be the one that I've purchased. I've used it many times before, and um, 
this is it. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying it's, I'm, I'm not component to any other. It's just simply notifying you as the one that I have purchased. Okay, so that's that job done. I've topped it up with ericaceous soil to be level to where the container's level of soil was. And that's the job done. Blueberries, look at that. I love when they sort of start with a greenish tinge and then the pinkish tinge, and then they turn into the fabulous blue, blue, blueberry. But I'm hoping that this plant does exceptionally well for me with all the love and care I have given it so that it produces plenty for many, many years to come. You can see the contrast of the two. One has lots of berries on it, whereas the other one has few, but I'm hoping that they will love their new home there. So what I've got to do now is just tidy up this area. I have some cuttings on the floor that I just need to tidy up. So that's what you're going to see me doing at the end to, all, you know, to finish off this video. Rake up this ground and make it nice and clean and tidy. When I say clean, I just mean so as not to encourage slugs and snails. So let me rake up these leaves. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your presence. I appreciate your company as I'm gardening. I'm just going to continue raking out and you can listen to the birds. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Keep well.